Hi, and welcome to the Savage Podcast. I'm Rose, also known as Cheap Lazy Vegan on YouTube. And I'm Daniel, one of your favorite guest stars on Cheap Lazy Vegan's YouTube channel. We're two friends who love to talk about the latest trending topics. So get comfortable and join us while we give our savage take on just about everything. You are currently listening to the previous episode of this podcast, but if you would like to listen to this week's episode and get some exclusive content, go over to patreon.com slash the savage podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the savage podcast. Hey, guys. Merry Christmas. Oh, my God. It's almost almost Christmas. Almost Christmas. Do you like our little, um, I don't know if you guys can see. (laughs) <laughs> it's kind of hard because like the background as well. Yeah. It's a little bit like... what Guys, New Year, we're going to change up the background because we're going to record in my apartment. Are we? In my new studio. Is that, what, is that what's going to happen? Yes. You've made an executive Although my decision. Although apartment, my apartment now is um, a crime scene. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is not a crime scene. Okay, so I was just telling Daniel. <laughs> okay, I'm genuinely like Concerned. a little freaked. Okay, here's the thing. Okay. Hopefully someone's not in your apartment waiting for you. Excuse you know? me. Uh, this is the first of all, this is what happens when you watch too much true crime. Yep. But so this is what happened. Okay. So today I was doing my laundry. Yep. Doing my laundry. Well, first of all, I realized <laughs> I was like, why do I seem like like my usually by the time I'm doing my laundry, like my laundry basket is like jam packed. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so but I usually like I do my laundry when I start to run out of underwear. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's a lot of people. Okay, good. Okay. So then I was like, okay, I'm starting to run out of underwear. But then I was like, my laundry basket is not that full. I'm like, did I really use up all my underwear? Where's my other laundry basket? Yeah. So then, so I have two laundry baskets. Mm -hmm. I have a white one and then this black one that's like, it's kind of like a mesh and then you can like fold it, but it's still big, but it becomes a flat thing. Okay. You guys know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So... (laughs) So I was like, I can't find my black laundry basket. How do you lose a laundry basket, people? How do you lose a laundry basket? With great difficulty. (laughs) But you did say it collapses, right? And it gets real small. Yes, but well, it doesn't get small. It just gets flat. It's still big. Like it still has a big surface area. Yeah. So I can't just like stash it in somewhere. And then like, for example, I can't put it in a drawer. Mm. Like it would have to be like, you know, behind furniture maybe. But I, I looked everywhere, people. It's somewhere in your house. Looked everywhere. Somewhere in my house. Why is the bank calling me? <laughs> I don't know. Do you want to? And, block? No, I'm not answering Scotia Bank. Sorry, Scotia Bank. Sorry. Um, um, no, but you know what? I'm thinking. You know how no. you're saying. You know how you were saying. Like what maybe you? you're running out of clothes, and you're like, oh, I don't know. You know, you're doing underwear when you, or you're doing underwear. You do your laundry when you're getting low on underwear. Sure. Well, it could be because you know some of your underwear is in like Montreal, and there's some <laughs> in other places. Like I think you're just starting to run low, Rose. I think you need to go underwear shopping. I, I do like to leave my underwear in different places. <laughs> But no, here's the thing. So I'm like looking for my fucking laundry basket, freaking out because I'm thinking, (laughs) okay, so normal person's mind, you're thinking, okay, I I put it somewhere. I put it away. I misplaced it. I don't know where it is. I will find it one day when I least expect it. Mm -hmm. My mind goes to somebody broke into my apartment and stole my laundry basket with my dirty clothes and dirty underwear in it. (laughs) That's immediately where my mind goes. Because, you know, out of all the stuff in your house to steal, that's what they're going to go um, for. If you're a pervert. Yeah, but. I don't know people's minds. Anyways. Typically so. people breaking into houses, it's because they're <laughs> going to try to steal stuff for monetary gain. Or they're stalkers and perverted. So maybe, oh, oh my God, maybe it's some people that have been watching you. Oh my God, stop. No, this is the thing though. Here's the thing. <gasps> By the way, don't try anything because I I called the <laughs> locksmith today. <laughs> This is what got me to call the locksmith, guys. It's about time. God I, damn, you've been thing. needed to call that locksmith thing, for years. The thing is, I moved into this place, right? And I was told that I need to change the locks like ASAP because, you know, you know, like y- you're a new owner. Yeah, and the, the previous, previous owners, owners might have. Ex- exactly. Yeah. So there is a chance that the key is somewhere in the ether. Anyways. Maybe one of the previous owner's friends. <laughs> And they just were having a nice little stroll in your house and <laughs> looking around. So anyways, um, so, then, so but for, for like two months, I was like putting off this calling the locksmith. <laughs> and then today, like the missing laundry basket. It was the was, catalyst. It, it was the straw that broke the camel's back. I, like I that. don't know if that's the right term, but it is. It was the thing that made me fucking finally call the locksmith. Mm-hmm. They're coming tomorrow morning. So don't fucking try. Don't it, try anything, okay? people. And bring me back my underwear. <laughs> 
Whoever came and, and my robbed- five dollar laundry basket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whoever came into Rose's house just to steal her, you know, laundry basket, just give it back, guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, seriously though, I was legit kind of scared. Were you actually freaking out? I mean, okay, I wasn't fully freaking out because obviously it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> it does sound a bit ridiculous. But at ridiculous, the same time, I was like, where could it be? I literally, guys, I looked everywhere. And the thing is, like, I look, I don't live in a giant house, okay? It's an apartment. Mm-hmm. It's not small, but like, it's, you know, it's an apartment. It's not huge. You know what I think it is, though? It's one of those things like, you know, like, for example, I might misplace something. Sure. And I'm looking everywhere for it. I'm like, oh my God, where the hell is this? And it will be like on my head or like, right. do you know what I mean? Like, it's like somewhere very obvious. Exactly. So I think what's happened I mean, in this situation so. is you have just put it somewhere and you've looked there, but you've not looked, if you know what I mean? Like you've missed it somehow. Yes, I hope so. But so I'm I, telling you, I fucking searched. I searched this home, man. Well, looked not, through all the well closets. Enough, I don't think. Looked through all the closets. Mm-hmm. Fucking tore everything apart. Anyways. <laughs> At least I called the locksmith. <laughs> there you go. At least you called the locksmith. You know what? That's You're slowly getting things done. God, things are going to start missing from my home. Oh, God dang. Anyway, guys, maybe that's, there's a ghost. That's scary as hell. Maybe there's a ghost. I think I think this is also a sign that you need to stop watching so much true crime. <laughs> yeah, I think like, I think so. you need to take pause the brakes on that. And, uh, you know, I think it, yeah. is, it is impacting Literally, my you. mind goes to, like, the worst possible scenario. <laughs> Like, did you tell your parents why you thought somebody came in and stole your <laughs> no. your laundry basket? Not oh your not God. your TV, not any well, of your. Well, you know valuables. what my parents would say? It's because your place is so messy, you can't find it. <laughs> okay, but right now it's pretty clean. Okay, I even cleaned out the office, Daniel. I would not be giving me those side eyes. That's true. My place is like, <laughs> like I haven't been home for like a while. Like I've been in and out of my apartment mm, like crazy. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. you know, some of us leave the house too. You know. Okay. Well. <laughs> Anyway. anyway, oh my God, you guys, we missed last week. We did miss last we, week. We had some issues, okay? I love how, like, literally, I swear the week before, we were like, we've never missed an episode. We did, yeah. We, we're amazing. We were, we're, no, no, that was when we were in Mexico, wasn't it? Like, because we did one in Mexico, then we did one I when we came remember, back. But either way, we definitely discussed it in the oh, recent Oh, yeah, yeah. Recent we're like, episode. guys, in the two years of us having this podcast, <laughs> we haven't even, like, missed one episode. Well, you know what? We were due. We yeah. were due a missed episode. We just needed, we, we needed a break. Yes. Um, Everything. There's too much going on, you guys. Yeah. But anyway, um, are there new patrons that we need to give thanks yes. to? Yes, well, guys, we have some Ooh, new Patreon exciting. shout outs. All right, guys. So we have <laughs> some new Patreons that have joined our little Patreon family. Um, if you haven't already, it's patreon.com slash the savage podcast. I can't speak, guys. Um, you get exclusive content. So we do a bonus episode every single week um, that's exclusive just for the Patreon community. Every um, single month, Daniel. Every single month. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you. Use. Um, and membership is starts at l- as low as $3 per month, guys. Ye. So, so we'd like out. to give thanks to. Yeah. Maggie. Liz. Alisa. Alyssa. Alisa. Alyssa. Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> Lada. And Rachel. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks for joining. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the family. Yee. Yeah. Yee. yee. <laughs> Anyways, um, shall we jump in? We shall jump in. I hope you enjoyed my laundry basket story. It was good. I, like, I mean, I if liked anything it. happens to me, please, first look for the laundry basket. <laughs> <laughs> it's black mesh. Continue. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so one thing that I did want to revisit today, um, and I did actually do a little bit more research, watched the like footage and stuff. Do you remember the Kyle Rittenhouse? Oh, shit, motherfucker. I know. You did the research. Yeah. Well, I didn't go like full. Oh, yeah. You know what? The thing is, because we didn't cover last week, mm-hmm. there is so much to discuss. There is a Okay, lot. let's talk about Kyle Rittenhouse because there's another story that kind of relates to that story yeah. a little bit. And, and and honestly, it's funny because you know how so many, like, like literally, guys, I think that's probably our most hated episode. <laughs> so many people blowing up in the comments okay, just to being be fair, like. I will be, I will be um, fair yeah. and say we did not do our research Mm. we did not sit through the trial we did not watch the whole thing yeah but at the same time oh so so that is our fault okay yeah yeah, yeah. but also we are not news okay so yeah but at the same time we stand by the fact that like people should not be walking around with guns exactly that's exactly it this is this is the point (laughs) that i want to make guys i think yes you know we can put our hands up right away and be like yeah we should have done a little bit more research into that like there was a few facts that were wrong like about his mom driving him and some other stuff did it change the whole gist of the story i'm not sure like some people were like commenting about how the difference between semi-automatic automatic guns whatever he had a gun right he had a (laughs) a rifle so at the age of 17 yeah and this is the thing if you don't see that as wrong you are American. Sorry. 
<laughs> but this is this is this is the issue that I have with the whole story. And again, I'm and some people were like, "You guys aren't taking this seriously. Like, this is a murder trial. We know that this is a murder trial. What do you mean we're not taking it seriously? I know some people were writing this. That doesn't make any sense. I know. And I was like, okay, you oh, know what? We're like laughing and stuff. Or I, I think it's and also because we had a few of the facts wrong and stuff. People okay, were like you're sure. not taking this fully fully seriously. I mean, so, who, who cares? We're on the jury. Continue. I know, but this is <laughs> the, this is my point is. There is a huge, and, and it, it still hasn't changed my overall opinion in a sense that like, what kind of message are you guys or like in general is, is people sending to say, hey, you know what? Because you have to look at the whole situation of what's going on. Yes, I, I watched the videos and it did look like these people were, there was like a mob kind of like chasing sure. him down and everything else. Okay, I get it. He was probably scared. He was running around with a gun, right? And people are saying, well, he was completely justified. He was acting in self-defense, right? And again, I'm not going to comment on, you know, whether or not I think this was self-defense or not. But what I'm saying is there is an issue when you have 17-year-olds playing vigilantes because that is essentially what they were doing. They were taking the role of the police into their own hands. Yep. And, you know, trying Although to... Although a lot of people have a problem with that term as well. But I think for sure he was yeah. a vigilante. A hundred percent. Because what else are you doing? He's, He's protecting the business. Why are you there with a gun? You exactly. know, they were saying, oh, he was helping like medical help or whatever. Like... But then they're gonna say they're he's there with a the gun because he wants to protect himself. Exactly. Because, well, because other people it's are an there endless with, cycle. Exactly. Other people are there with guns. So so my like the way that I looked at it, I was like I reflected back a bit on this story and I was like, look, and again, it's, it's just <laughs> this whole gun the situation is so fucked up. I know. Up. It's That's, fucked up because it's so ingrained in American culture yeah. that like we like it's so hard for me to understand. Yeah, I don't I, I don't think we'll ever understand it, to be honest. Yeah. And like I just thought about my own self. So like if I show up, if I deliberately go somewhere where it's political unrest. Yeah. And I go to be a vigilante or to protect businesses yeah. <laughs> yeah. and I take a gun with me, chances are you're at a high risk to get in a gun fight, a gun yes. fight with somebody. Yes. Very, very high risk. So versus if I was in the grocery store, minding my own business, grabbing groceries and doing whatever else, and I got attacked, I feel like the self-defense, um, right. uh, what's it called? The self-defense argument. defense yeah. or argument mm -hmm. is more justified. But again, like I'm not going to comment and say like if I think he should have been or not, but the, I think the root problem yeah. is that he should not have been there with a gun. I think, I think the root problem is beyond this case, yeah, right? So beyond this trial. Yeah. So the, the fact that the attitude is that it's completely self-defense. Like this yeah. is 110%. Which, I mean, you could say it is self-defense like for sure. But at mm -hmm. the same time, you have to kind of like look at the culture in general, yeah. like as a whole, why are there people there? And people say, Oh yeah, there were other people there with guns too. Yeah. That's, that's exactly your point. Why is everyone there running guns? around with guns? <laughs> like, I don't know. It's crazy. And then the, the crazy part is now after this trial, I feel like gun sales probably going to go up. Yeah. You know, it's going to get more. Because people are like, oh, they need I'm justified. Mm -hmm. That's look at that case. He yeah. won. He was just protecting himself. Sure. With a rifle sure. or whatever gun he had. If guys. somebody attacks me, I need to shoot. Exactly. That's what they're thinking. And like you literally kill people like. Yeah. That's the point of a gun. Exactly. And and I just I will never. Understand I know. I don't this. get it. And people were just like, honestly, in the comment section, I was like, <laughs> whoa, like people need to because calm like, down. Uh, in America, it's like a very even. I it's still like definitely a left versus right issue. Mm. Definitely left wing people. There's a lot more that like are for gun control and all that yeah. stuff. But even though that is the case, they are still like a lot more pro gun. Yeah, even yeah, yeah. like left wing people in America are very much more because it's like ingrained in the culture. I don't really know why. I'm sure there's some kind of Reason. history behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure the NRA has a lot to do with it. Yeah. But like it's not something that other like look, I will say this, guys, like if you're not in the if you are in the US, you have to understand that a lot of other countries just simply do not understand or agree with that kind exactly. of culture. Okay. So that's where our perspective comes from. And I think, but I think, I think also too, to that mm -hmm. point is there's some justification behind that because look at, mm -hmm. you know, I think the, the, you know what, let's just, let's just be unbiased here for a minute and let's just look at statistics. Yeah. Where are all majority of the mass shootings? <laughs> where are all, where is all primarily a tons and tons of gun violence? Yeah. More so than so many other countries. Yeah. And it's like well, even control for population. Exactly. If even yeah. if you even if you extrapolate, like obviously in Canada we have a lot less people, but if you look at like percentage per capita, yeah. like divided by the number of people, it is just I insane know. how much more gun violence there is down in the US. And like I don't understand how people can still justify that having a gun or having more, everyone having guns is more safe. It's not. It's like, just it's that's the justification they use continuously. Yeah. Because good guys with guns will stop the bad guys with guns. Yeah. But like the fact is that 
<clears throat> and now they're going to use this trial probably because they're going to say that Kyle Rittenhouse was like the good guy with the gun or whatever. Yeah. Protecting businesses and stuff. Yeah, but but then it's like, this, why, why are you even yeah. there? But the fact is that if you actually look at the big picture, mm -hmm. more guns equals more gun violence. Ex well, exactly. There's no, there's no, and, and, and honestly guys, if anyone can prove otherwise, please send, <laughs> send me some yeah. information, some statistics, some like something around yeah. this where you just can't. I there's know. No, it's crazy. The, the logic is flawed. Um, it's it's beyond flawed. It's yeah. just false. I'm sorry. It's false. Yeah. Okay. If you get there's if there's more guns in the atmosphere, there's gonna be. Well, first of all, I think the whole argument that like good guys with guns will stop the bad guys with guns. Yeah. It's just childish. I'm yeah. sorry, but because but they'll, they'll always say, "Oh, well, people <laughs> will illegally access guns." I'm like, "Yeah, but they're gonna do that anyway, right?" Like people, people, people here exactly. do that. Exactly. Yeah, I understand that, mm -hmm. but you have to also understand that it's like you can't. How do I say it? You can't like label people as good guys versus bad guys. Mm -hmm. There are tons of people that are kind of like gray area. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably the most people yeah. in the world. Yeah. Okay. So when all of these gray area people, which a lot of us have mental health issues, a mm. lot of us have just issues in general. We have anger issues. Yeah. If you have all these gray area people that have guns, mm. You're going to have some of them shoot people, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they're gangsters because I'm sure, I don't know the statistics, but I'm sure if you look at the statistics in America, it's not always the gangsters that are shooting people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? And why are you having every... Oh, mass shootings. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about last year because it was COVID. Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah. one good thing that came from COVID was that because everyone was staying home, that decreased the number of mass shootings. How yeah. fucking fucked up is that? Yeah. But I'm sure they're going back up now. Mm -hmm. And before that, it was literally, I think we talked about it before, but it was yeah. like, ma there was more mass shootings per in a year than days of the year. In the, in the U.S. In, in the U.S. Which Meaning, is insane. There was at least one mass shooting every, single, every day. single day. And a mass shooting, I think, was described as like three or more people were killed or, some, yeah. or three or more people were shot. I can't remember. But yeah, it, yeah. like, it's fucked. Yeah. So don't fucking tell me that it's working whatever like you know what maybe we don't agree fully on like what you define gun control but exactly. like i just don't get how you can argue that this works but well, then now because it's such a problem yeah now everyone's like i need to get a gun exactly because now they're thinking mm. oh look what happened yes. with kyle like, which i i guess i kind of understand that mentality mm -hmm. but you kind of have to change that because it's like you know it's just uh, it's so <laughs> there is a different way to live just putting it out there guys yeah. there is oh. a different way to live like australia they got rid of guns like many years ago yeah after they're like big some kind of big mass they shooting had, yeah i can't remember what it what exactly I think it was yeah. like in the 80s or something yeah something like this they and had then a huge they shooting. banned guns guys okay yeah. so only the bad guys can get guns and they've had like no gun issues it's, it's been a lot Since. less yeah well and it's like it's like the uk is another good example i believe that they had yeah. a couple i want to say it was in the 70s or the 80s but don't quote me mm -hmm. on that but the, around the same time as australia they, sure. they had a couple mass like right i remember there was a famous school i think in scotland where there was like a mass shooting yeah. or something and because of that that installed them to be like okay yeah. we really need to look at our gun legislation and, mm -hmm. and everything else it's like a wake-up call you know yeah and uh, some countries don't want to have a mass shooting every day <laughs> um so they you know increase gun legislation <laughs> Did that get rid of every single amount of gun violence? No. Of Are there going to be still people that illegally get guns? Yes. But is it has it drastically decreased the amount of gun violence in the country? Of course. Exactly. So I I, I just I I cannot. <laughs> I know I can't understand. I, I don't understand. I just, I just can't get to that. I you know? know. I don't understand. And and this. But this, now I I kind of understand the fear because now there's all this fear. Yeah. Because there's so much gun, there are so many guns. Yeah. You know, now everyone's like, I do need to protect myself. I need a gun for my It's like a vicious protection. cycle. Yeah. And then I get yeah. a gun, you get a gun, everybody's running around with fucking guns. Yeah. And then, you know, kids pick up guns, accidentally shoot, shoot people. There was yeah. a, so this leads up to the next story. Is there anything else you want to talk about with no, Kyle Rittenhouse? No, that was it for Kyle Rittenhouse. So this leads up to the for next me. story, um, which is basically the fifth, I think he was a 15 year old. Oh, Sorry God. if I get the... I, have you heard about this? I haven't heard about this, no. You haven't heard about this? No. This, like, happened, like, maybe a week after the tri trial for okay. Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what state. Let me just pull this up. But the 15-year-old, he uh, went to school with a gun that his parents gave him. Oh, no, I didn't hear that. Yeah. And it's, it's insane. Basically, his parents have actually been charged with, um, like, manslaughter or something like this because they were very much um kind of like negligent to say the least basically there were all these um all these red flags this kid so 15 year old 
is accused of killing four classmates and obviously injuring a bunch, I think. And what happened was, first of all, I think two, I mean, multiple people are at fault. Yeah. First of all, the school, I don't think they did that much, to be Mm. fair. I mean, the teacher did report that um, he was like drawing these like really disturbing images and also writing stuff like, oh, I can't get the idea out of my head of like, you know, he's obviously having some kind of big mental health crisis. Okay. And then so I think he she reported this like, you know, what the fuck are we looking at? Oh, my God. The gun in question was an early Christmas present from his parents. Yes. I know. This is what I'm saying. Like he's fifth. And he called it his new beauty. Oh my God, that's so fucked up. So, okay, well, let's look at it. The day after Thanksgiving, he and his father had gone together to a Michigan gun shop to buy it. He and his mother spent a day testing out the gun, which was stored unlocked, unlocked in a, in the parents' bedroom. On Monday, when a teacher reported seeing their son searching online for ammunition, his mother did not seem alarmed. And then his mother texted him saying, LOL, I'm not mad at you. Just don't get caught. Um, or you'll have to learn not to get caught. So clearly... Again, that's beyond negligence, right? Yeah. That's almost like egging him on or like, oh you know what I God. mean? Like you can do it. Just don't get caught. Yeah. Um, and then a, a day later, the authorities say the teenager fatally shot four classmates in the halls of Oxford High School in suburban Detroit using the handgun his parents had bought for him. And then there was like another incident where I think, yeah, the teacher saw something else that was like yeah, disturbing, yeah, yeah. reported it. The signs and, were there. Yes. And then yeah. the parents came and then I can't remember exactly what happened, but the parents basically didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. Right. Because like it be- definitely was like a big warning sign. It was something like I want to kill people or something along yeah. those lines. What the fuck? Yeah. Okay. So what kind of country? <laughs> okay. I, I don't want to blame the country. I know. Yeah. What it's... kind of parents, first of all, and what kind of culture is this? But, the, but this, this is, is insanity. But exactly. But this is, this is the point, the whole point about the gun control and mm-hmm. everything else. People like, people will be like, oh, it's fine to like, you know, everyone should have this in prote- like for protection, whatever yeah. else. But then it's like, you realize, and again, this is going to sound bad guys, but you're, when you have laxed or more relaxed gun legislation, you're literally opening it up to everybody. So those yeah. people that are maybe not, you know, maybe negligent parents, people that are, you know, all this stuff, now they have access easily to guns. Yeah. So, you know, you, this is a perfect example of these parents literally gifting their son, a 15 year old, which I'm like, wh- what does, why? Yeah. <laughs> why? And what like, is the purpose of having a gun? I know. And like, maybe I'd understand a bit more if like you lived on a farm out in the countryside sure, and like, you like had maybe, to like shoot sure. birds and shit. But like, they live in Detroit. That is a freaking like. Who are you shooting? Exactly. If you want to play with guns, go. To, there is there are shooting ranges. Okay, those things exist. Mm. Um, yeah. you can go to a shooting range. Yeah. You can play a video game. Yeah. You don't buy your fifteen year old son clearly who's having mental health issues. You don't buy him a gun. It's so bad. And leave it unlocked. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. So yeah. Anyways, they're actually being charged. The parents. Yeah. And I think he's being tried as an adult as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. America don't play, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Their justice system, they do not play. No. Um, he's being charged as an adult. But like, I don't know. It's and just it's so this, fucked. And this still won't be a wake-up call for gun reform. I don't think anything will. I don't know what's going to happen because yeah. every time something like this happens, there's always a debate, but yeah. literally nothing ever nothing happens. Ha- well, you know what? Yeah. I, you know what? You would think... Once you hit a certain number of mass shootings per year, yeah. that would be a wake up call for the country. I know. To be like, hey, I think that we actually need to do something about it. But then our gun they're thinking the, the mindset is different because yeah. they're thinking, no, we need more guns to protect from the people mass shooters. from the mass shooters. That's the difference in mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking because there's all these guns, because I don't see people as black and white. For example, I don't see like this little kid, 15 mm. year old child, as like, the bad guy yeah, yeah, with yeah. a gun. I yeah. see him as a victim of terrible parenting, yeah. first of all, and somebody and that has a major to guns. and easy access to guns and a major mental health issue. Yeah. And and the and the authorities not doing enough to stop it where they could have stopped it. Exactly. Exactly. So it's not it's not a, yeah. a case about the bad guys and the good guys. Yeah. It's like everyone in between. Do you know what I, I mean? It's and, just crazy. And and again, you you're giving access or you're allowing easy access for every single person. Yeah. It's going to make for more dangerous things like this. Like think about these four the poor parents of these four kids. Your kids I going know, to school so and they're fucking shot. It's so sad. And then oh, another like thing that made the parents very like, you know, sus- like suspect. Yes. Is like when the the parents heard about this like shooting that was cuz obviously, you know, when this kind of thing happens, like the parents start Find hearing out. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
they didn't know who it was, right? Like nobody yeah. knew who it was. But then his mom texted her, him saying, mm-hmm. don't do it. And his dad called saying, I think my son is the shooter. They knew there were, so- that's the thing. You don't, normal parents <laughs> do not think my son is the shooter, right? No, like, you think, oh my God, is my son okay? Exactly. You're freaking out. You're like, yeah. oh my God, I need to go save my son. They, they already knew because there were so many signs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's fair that they're being charged, to yeah. be honest. Oh God. I mean, why? <laughs> like, why does a 15 year old need a gun? I don't know. The answer is they don't. They have to protect themselves from all all the other 15-year-olds with guns. That all have guns. Yeah. Um, But I guess, you know what? If all the other 15-year-olds had guns, somebody could have shot him as well. (laughs) You know what I mean? And then that person would have been charged with murder. Exactly. Or, no, that person could have gotten, uh, instead, it was self-defense. Yes. I don't fucking know. Okay? It's just just fucking crazy, this shit. One of my my colleagues yesterday, was it yesterday? No, yesterday was Sunday. So it was today. Was like, oh, talking about like maybe going to the States and stuff like that. I was like, (laughs) <laughs> like I, I'll go there for like a vacation, but like oh, like she's to moving to the states, and I was like, "Don't do it." <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're do the only not. ones that are like, "I'm scared of the guns." <laughs> well, it's scary, honestly. I know. This shit is scary. Like, if I hear someone, even like, yeah, you know, sometimes you hear a car like backfire, and it kind of sounds like a gunshot. Oh my god, seriously though, it's scary. I'm like, oh my god, hit yeah. the ground. <laughs> who's who's <laughs> yeah. running around with a gun here? Like literally though. Like even if I even if I saw a gun, like if if, yeah. if someone like all of a sudden just like pulled a gun and put it on I, the table I, know. I would be like whoa I'd be like, i need to get the fuck out of here i know i'd just be like this is not yeah like cool it's, you know it's what I mean? not normal Mm-mm. no sorry Mm-mm. it's not there are other ways to live guys there are other ways okay. to live there are other ways to live God, i forgot about this story but yeah. no it's i'm Giving glad that you a brought 15 it up year old a gun is not a way to live no that's crazy and i'm, I'm just like how many more of these stories do we need to hear do you and know what I mean? Like, when is, is this gonna... legal? Also, that was another crazy thing about mm. the whole Kyle Rittenhouse thing because mm. people said that, like, at first he was being charged with all these counts, right? Yeah. One of the counts was ha- having a weapon like below Under the age, age of eighteen. Yeah. But then apparently the judge threw that out, and a lot of people said that it was legal in like because every state has like different laws. Yeah, and every stuff. state. Yeah, yeah. And I guess it was legal for him to have that in that state. I don't know exactly, yeah. but like obviously the judge threw it out for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In what universe? Are you 17 and legally allowed to carry a weapon that can kill people? I don't know. I don't understand this. You can't vote. You can't You can't vote. You can't drink a beer. Yeah. But you can carry a rifle or a gun. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's crazy. I'm never going to He's going to have to wait four years to drink a beer. Or, yeah, four years to drink a beer. But, but he can kill people. Oh, damn. shit. This did story. Did you hear about this? Yes, I heard about this story. I watched the video. Oh, God. God. Damn. What did you think? I want to hear your thoughts. Um, okay, well, let's let's discuss it. So, better. I didn't know it was better.com. What's better.com? I don't even know what business Anyways, is this. Let me take better. a look. Better.com CEO fires 900 employees on Zoom call at the same time. Okay. What is... Oh, it's the right mortgage could save you thousands. I guess it's about, like, mortgage rates and... Okay, Cool. Um, so this guy, <laughs> first of all, this, did you watch this, the video? I it did. Was so funny. I know it was kind of cringe. Yeah. Um, but the thing is something similar happened like in the beginning of the pandemic mm-hmm. with like, you know, bird, the, the, uh, the scooter, the scooter company. Yeah. I think they did something similar mm-hmm. where they also fired like 200 people or something on yeah. one zoom call See, and, I, and that went viral. I know. So I'm like, bitch, are you stupid? <laughs> I know. And I also, I'm just like, I don't, like, I, I don't, again, I don't work for this company. I don't yeah. know what this company's like, but like, typically like your company structure, you like report into people, right? Yeah. Like, why is the like manager of your team not like letting you go? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it, because one it's just on one? too many and waste of time. I don't understand. And that could be it. Like, maybe they're just like, but we just want to get everyone just, done in a foul swoop. It's just so, I don't know. And like, right before Christmas. I know, right? You couldn't even wait till the new year. And I like, heard he also got like a huge bonus, of course, because he's like the CEO, I think. Yeah, That's I, also, what I, heard. I also heard he got like, so, yeah. but basically, if those of you guys that haven't seen the video, you should just take, give it a watch. You can read the little quotes there, Daniel. Oh, so yeah. reenact it, Daniel. Okay. You're the CEO of better.com. Okay, guys. <laughs> oh, guys, this isn't news that you're going to want to hear. Oh, no, wait, hang on. Where was the part where he was like... <laughs> <laughs> guys this is the second time in my career that i'm doing this and i do not want to do this the last time i did it i cried <laughs> poor me you know oh, poor me poor poor ceo poor ceo um and he said this isn't news that you're gonna want to hear if you're on this call for all these 900 people oh, no. you're part of the unlucky group that's being fired um your employment that's being here, laid off yeah and your employment <laughs> here is terminated effective immediately oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> is no. that legal too? I don't know, man. I, th- I think in the because this company, I think this is based out of the U.S. Oh, and I think that their labor laws law. are different. You guys, come on! Don't yeah. you have labor laws? Like, don't you have laws that say that you can't just be like immediate termination unless, like, I know in Canada, for example, mm-hmm. you can't just like fire people like unless they did something like, for example, steal from the company. Yeah. Or it's, like, there's a list of things that you could get e- like fire mm-hmm. for immediately. But if you're getting laid off, you need to have some kind of like you know period mm. of time so that's like also very shocking <laughs> yeah what the fuck? <laughs> it's like the the thing is w- typically he doesn't also- want to do it though daniel he's no, gonna he's, cry and he's so sad about it and he feels like emotional and you know what i'm sure it is actually a hard thing but you know what as the ceo maybe he doesn't even know half the people do you know what i oh, mean he's- that's that's why he's doing it because yeah. it's like it's of course it's gonna be hard because if you have mm-hmm. to sit face to face with one person and tell them that's so tough mm-hmm. right but then, like, um, is that him? Yeah. Why did he look white in the in the video? I Am I crazy? Can we play the video for a second? Maybe I... Oh, okay. Maybe I just, like, saw it from far away. But, um, <laughs> like, it's obviously really hard to do it in person to, like, somebody that you know, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know why, like, you know, I don't know why they got the CEO to do it. Yeah, it's really strange. Like, that's just a... Like, I don't get it anyway. So and then and then after he got some backlash, though, then he came forward and was like, um, I think it was like after a little bit of backlash, because people were like, oh, my God, right before Christmas, you're laying off yeah. all these people. And then he was like, no, like a lot of these people were being terminated. At least 250 of the 900 people were terminated, who were terminated, were working an average of two hours per day while clocking eight in a day in the payroll system. OK, then you talk to them. Yeah. And. You have their manager, their direct report, talk to them and say, why are you working two hours a day and clocking mm-hmm. in eight? That's called a performance issue. Yeah. And there are ways of like dealing with that. And not- or managing people out. You yeah. Know what I mean? And then you didn't say anything about that when you were fucking firing them. And if it's 250 people, what about the other fucking 650? I know. <laughs> Well, they they were just unlucky. They were just caught in the... Oh, my God. The thing is, the thing that sucks, guys, and honestly, like, we're going to see more and more of this. We see this all the time. Again, it comes down to the whole, like, capitalistic model. Yeah. And, like, you know, there's ways to, like... Obviously, companies try to boost their revenue. Obviously, they want to grow and have more revenue. But also, another way that they can deliver more profits is also cut costs, right? Oh, yes. It's the best way to cut costs. Exactly. 900 people, that's a lot of fucking... Co- cost cut, you oh, know? Yeah. A lot huge. of money to the shareholders. Exactly. And who are the primary sh- shareholders? small percentage of individuals <laughs> okay. i remember there was like a stack yeah. guys and it might have changed a little bit but they were saying like 80 this is in the u.s again it was mm-hmm. like 85 percent of people that have Stop shares holders. of, yeah. of shareholders yeah. was the top like 10 yeah, yeah, percent yeah. of the population yeah because yeah something like this yeah because most people like you know like regular joes that are maybe working nine to five maybe they don't even have like you know investments maybe they have a few but not yeah. many but like a little bit you yeah. know what i mean it's not like they have a huge yeah. like they don't have hundreds and t- hundreds of thousands exactly. in investment accounts yeah. right so oh my God. and then he said so after he said yeah 250 of them were terminated because they were working an average of two hours a day blah 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 mm-hmm. they were stealing from you and stealing from our customers who pay the bills that pay our bills mm-hmm. get educated <laughs> dude like, it doesn't matter. The point is, like, listen, if there's a performance issue, you talk to them separately, not on a Zoom call. Yeah. And you're supposed to give them warnings as well. Well, like, he, well he, and, and, you know what? To their credit, though, it just says here <laughs> in this article as well. On the Zoom call, he told the laid off employees the company would provide four weeks of severance um, and one month of full benefits. But again, I don't know how long these people were working there. Like, what if they were, like, right. super long tenor right. employees? You know what I mean? So. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. Just, like. Whoever recorded that though, like good on you. Oh <laughs> Record God. every every Zoom call, people. Oh God, how funny is That's that? That's so fucked. Like I just I, I just know. feel also the way that he went about doing it. He's like, oh, you know, it was like he was like, I feel so bad. I know he's the victim here. Yeah, he's gonna be so traumatized. He cried. Mm-hmm. Why are you doing? You probably don't even have to do it. That's the crazy part. If I was a CEO, I'd be like, no, 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 you do this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You talk to your you know direct reports. Yep. And then you you fire them. Okay, yeah. I'm not dealing with that. Because yeah. is that even part of his job description? I don't know. He's maybe, a CEO. Why is he doing this? I have no idea. I don't understand. But you know that uh, at the end of the year when they're doing their budgets and stuff, he's probably right. going to get a fat bonus. <laughs> oh, they're going to be sure. like, They're going to be like, hey, guess what? Here's $25 million. Oh Thanks for God. saving us, you know, know, the money from the salaries and everything. It's so crazy. Like, the I model's know. fucked. And the it's thing fucked. is, yeah. the thing is that's kind of crazy though, guys, is like, it's getting worse. Yeah. Like, they're, the companies are trying to get more streamlined and more streamlined. Mm-hmm. And, and yet- it's everything's automated yeah and yet the salaries of the people at the top yeah continue to exponentially grow 
So when's it going to break, guys? I think, I mean, what's going to come first? The collapse of the business model or the collapse of the climate? (laughs) Well, we're in a really, really sad race here, Rose. Oh, God. Did you see this story? I think I heard about this. So Drake withdraws his 2022 Grammy nominations. Mm. So I guess he was uh, nominated for a few Grammys. Yeah. And does this have something to do with race? Well, I don't think it's necessarily specifically to do with race, but he was just kind of saying like how he, you know, I, I, I think because he's been nominated so many times and he's only won like, I think he's won four Grammys in total. Okay. Um, And he's just like really not a fan of the Grammys. <laughs> like I think oh, he's like, he's okay. like, he's like, um, where do you say Let's that? see here. Neither Drake nor members of his team. No, it team is. It, it does have to do with race. Oh, okay. You're right. Specified why he opted to remove himself from mm-hmm. the lineup so late in the game. But the certified lover boy singer mm-hmm. has been vocal about his issues with the Recording Academy in the past. In 2017, yeah. he slammed the awards body for only giving his song Hotline Bling accolades in rap categories as opposed to general categories or slots, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, he, he was yeah. saying in an interview, I guess, the only mm-hmm. category that they, the Grammys fit him into is the rap category um, just because he's rapped in the past and also because he's black. Right. So I'm a black like, artist. I'm apparently a rapper, mm-hmm. even though Hotline Bling is not a rap song, but he's only... Okay. Yeah. So I think it does have to do with... It has to do with how the Grammys, I guess, they categorize artists. Sure. And how he's like... You know, so he's just like... And he also has just said like a bunch of times in the past, he was like, you know, the Grammy Awards are not really important. Right. He's just like, you know, they're just kind of, you know, there's something that used to be important back in the day, but he doesn't, you know, he's like. Right. So this year, he, I guess he was nominated for two. I want to say two or three. And he's just pulled out his nominations. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not God taking part. Damn. I mean, he already won one. So he's exactly. like, done it. <laughs> he's like, done it, been there. But you know, what? this is, this comes to say not just about the Grammys, but a lot of these award shows. I mean, they're all kind of stupid, aren't they? Yeah. But like, what yeah. was, the, what was the other one? Um, Oscars. Is it the Oscars? Is it the one where that's Par- the acting one? Yeah, the where Parasite won a bunch, right? Was that the yeah, Oscars? Yeah, yeah, the Oscars. Yeah. yeah, and they were saying how a lot of these like historic like um, events and yeah. stuff like that they were set up very like um, white focused. I mean, yeah, and that's why like not a lot of international stuff content of would course. get promoted. All this stuff and like so there's been issues with these types of um, award shows. I think for a long mm-hmm, time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think maybe they're starting to try to change. Maybe and, and try to like be more. <laughs> Inclusive? I don't know. Inclusive? I don't know. Yeah, are I guess. they really, guys? I don't know. I mean, Parasite won, I guess. Oh, God damn. That's true. Mm-hmm. Parasite be winning everything. God damn. It won a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they're kind of like, I'm sure it's a an honor. You know, if somebody nominated me for a Grammy, I wouldn't say no. Yeah. You know? I think it's a Rose Lee, um, new best recording artist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you releasing an album that I don't know about, Rose? <laughs> Maybe one day. God damn. Um, but at the same time, like it's a lot of politics, a lot of like, because even just to get nominated, I think there's like a like, whole process. Yeah, it's yeah. like a thing. So, um, yeah, I don't know. And then a lot of people have complained in the past, even about the Oscars and stuff and just mm-hmm. like saying it's very white and very like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But also, I mean, we can just look at the we can extrapolate the Oscars and the mm-hmm. Grammys just in general. Like the world is like this, right? It's like yeah. the way that Hollywood, it's like we're focused on Hollywood when there's yeah. so many other countries that do great movies. Um, but we're only focused on the English speaking, you know, movies. This is so true. Right. So we could say the same thing. Just, I think it's just movie and enter- entertainment culture mm-hmm. as a whole and as a general thing. Yeah. You know, right. what actually is like a really, um, it was like quite an interesting show on Netflix. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's called Hollywood. <laughs> and it was a it was a short series that was like I think it was like maybe is it old? No, but it's it is it's it's like basically. Did you just watch it recently? No, I watched it a while ago. So I can't watch it anymore. Why not? Because it's probably not on Netflix anymore. No, it probably is. I you always so say that, but every time you recommend I know, that's something, true. it's I'll not be like, on I'll be like, Netflix. Rose, this amazing show on Netflix. Yeah. And then it's like, uh, actually, it's on Netflix So this anymore. is why I always check with year recommendations. Yeah. So, but, <laughs> but anyway, guys, if it is on Netflix, it's called Hollywood. And it's it, it actually looks at like, well, some of the issues of like the olden days. like but in, And it's, some of them are still prevalent today. But it kind of follows the story of this um, screenwriter who happens to be black. Oh. And he like isn't getting any jobs and really struggling to get his like script seen. And then the whole like process is about like, basically this this black writer and then they want the the main character to be this black woman okay and it's like really i i don't know i think it's really well done and then they have like an award ceremony at the end as well and i don't know it's just like it's really like i i really enjoy it kind of like making fun of like hollywood yeah but also but also it like was like not empowering but like you know i'm not gonna give away too much well i probably won't watch it because it's probably not on netflix yeah 
probably not anymore. And you um, probably watched it in Spain or something. That's probably what happened. I mean, I wa- <laughs> you know, I, I watched a lot. You know what? Honestly, I watched a lot of shows when I was in Spain, guys, because like I was, you were stuck. I was stuck for nine weeks. Oh my god, I can't even. Not believe. able to leave my house. I mean, don't be dramatic. You left your house to get groceries. That's all we were allowed yeah, to do. Yeah, but still, you still left your house once a week. I'd go down to the grocery store. Yeah, but you still w- left the house. Okay, but then the rest of the week I was locked. <laughs> in, I was locked in my. And you, you, you went to your ceiling. Yeah, I had a roof. You know, lo- there's people quarantining right now that can't leave their room. That's true. There, my saving grace was like a lot of the apartment buildings in Spain. Like they're not that high; they go like maybe four stories. Yeah. And the roof is always like um, like it's like a roof patio almost. Mm-hmm, like they have mm-hmm. like a area where you go and people hang their clothes up there to dry. And it's just kind of like I just went up there all the time. I'd always like get on my phone because <laughs> like my Wi-Fi would also connect still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I would oh, just like good. I would just walk laps like this around the oh, building. I those like, times. Yeah. Can't believe it. It's been almost two years. What has changed? Nothing. <laughs> now we have the Omicron. Oh God. Omic- Om- Omicron. 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 Why can't we say it? I don't know. I heard it's not as bad though, but I don't want to say anything I know. because I've heard maybe mixed I'm wrong. things. I've heard yeah. it's like super more contagious, but they don't know how contagious it is, but they're yeah. just saying it's more contagious than other variants. I mean, I'm hoping it's going to turn into a flu. Yeah. That it will just keep like. Yes, because I mean, because we have discussed it where it's like viruses tend to, the longer they stay, the, the kind of weaker yeah. they get in terms of like they're not as deadly. Mm. So that's the flu, right? Yeah. Like, yes, some people die, f- f- of course, but mm-hmm. like the percentage is like much, much lower. Yeah. So, because like the viruses want to survive too, right? What the fuck is a virus? Like, anyway, it's like because they want to like, like survive, a, right? Yeah. So they want to spread to as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. And the only way to survive is if they don't kill the host. Yeah, because if they kill the host, yes. they die too. So as they evolve, yeah, they become stronger. That's fucked up, man. It's so weird. So as they evolve, because they survived longer, they become weaker and weaker in terms of they're not as deadly. Mm-hmm. So that they can survive in the host. Ooh. Oh God! It's kind of creepy. It is very <laughs> creepy because, like, I don't think viruses—they don't have brains. I don't think. No, they're, kind of like they're muta- not like sentient. I know, but they like mutate and like you know, That's and so they weird. still have that like survival, you know, instinct. Yeah, they still want to survive. It's kind of like plants, probably, right? Like plants don't like—they're not sentient. They don't yeah. have like brains, but they still like there's certain things that like you know, they do to try to survive yeah yeah there are like survival things yeah right? like it's interesting like when you have like a plant for example and if you put it by a window right all the leaves will start to face towards the window right. to get to maximize exactly. sunlight little things like this exactly. like exactly because they're like i want to survive or like yeah i don't know it's just yeah, kind it's of like weird god damn it'd be crazy oh, god damn so anyway this virus i'm just hoping it gon't you know it gon't just become a flu i know because it's still kind of like I know we did our like little mini escape to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. But like overall, I still feel a bit like uncomfortable or a bit like Now shady. I feel more un- well yeah. after cuz like before Mexico, it was like the reason why we went is cuz it was it felt like it was getting better, right? Yeah. And then of course, as soon as you feel like it's getting better, you're like, "Oh shit, new variant." Yep. So when we came back is when the, kind of the new variant thing was like exploding. Mm. Sorry. And then no worries. <laughs> and then um yeah, and then people start freaking out. I think there are still certain like countries that are like blacklisted or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think South Africa is one of them. Yeah, and then like I think like maybe the whole of Africa, I'm mm-hmm. not sure. Um but then there was a story of <laughs> So there was like a bunch of stories I saw like last week and it was like Canadians that had like been overseas yeah. that were like returning from these countries that were kind of like blacklisted mm. or, you know, where the Omnicom came from or whatever, like, yeah. or where they found it, guys. Like, mm. I, I like South Africa found the variant. They discovered it. Doesn't mean that they're the, it, it, the epicenter. It, exactly. Yeah. I don't know why people. Can, and also, even if it was like where it, you know, you know, generated or mm. whatever doesn't mean anything like you know it could have started anywhere in the world yeah, exactly. it's just like anyway people are so stupid anyway people are being like racist and shit about asia and so oh, like anyway God. so fucking stupid anyway um so i guess there's these families that came and then because canada like you know we didn't know much about this variant so of course like everyone's like freaking out yeah, yeah, yeah. and i guess like if you come from one of those countries even if you're vaccinated you still have to um, when you arrive, I guess you have to take that PCR test yeah. upon arrival. Okay. And because it takes like a couple days or whatever to get your results, to get your results mm-hmm. they put you in like a quarantine hotel. And there were these articles that were like talking about how like awful these quarantine hotels are. Mm. And, um, and like, oh my God, it was such a terrible experience. Mm. And then I was reading it and okay, I, I'm sure it was bad. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say it wasn't bad. I'm sure it was like, you know, maybe not the best experience, but it, it was tad dramatic, mm. tad dramatic. It was like the title of the article would be like negative results, like 
people forced to stay in quarantine hotel even after negative test result. Yeah. That sounds like you're fucking quarantining for like two weeks. Like it's after horrible. you got it, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like literally like, so I got the test results and it was negative on Saturday and I couldn't leave until Sunday. <laughs> it was like, so you had to stay one day at the hotel. Yes, and uh, apparently it was very traumatic. Yeah, you know, and I'm like, are we fucking spoiled over here? Like, oh my god. Maybe maybe their hotel had bed bugs, Rose. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. If there were bed bugs, I will 100 percent take back everything I just said. <laughs> but it would be like the food. I mean, they did complain about the food. Yeah. Which you know what? Fair enough. Food is important. Yeah. But it was like, yeah, the food was so bad, and like, um. I think a lot of it sounded a little bit whiny to me, though. Yeah, yeah like kind like, of a bit privileged. Yeah, a little privileged. Yeah. Like a little bit first world problem. Like, I get it. The thing is, like, I understand. I would have complained, too, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I would have been like, oh, my God, why am I still here? Like, we got the result. But is it newsworthy? Like, mm-hmm. should I, would I do an interview with with CBC? Probably not. No, I don't think I would either. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I might tell my friends and be like, that was fucking ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, but like, I wouldn't get this shit. I wouldn't get on a news channel and be like, maybe write oh, a Facebook post. This is the worst thing that's ever <laughs> happened in my life. <laughs> They yeah. made me stay an extra day. <laughs> Let it's me like, find it's like, this article. I have to tell you guys, something came up on my Facebook feed. Speaking of people being a little bit crazy. Okay, tell me. So um, just for those of you that don't know that aren't in Canada, I guess, um, well, not I guess, the Canadian government during the COVID mm-hmm, and during this mm-hmm. this time, they they um for people that got laid off and were unemployed, they started doing this thing called the CERB, which was like supposed to be like a, a payment that you were supposed to get if you didn't have employment. Yes. And you weren't working and it was supposed to like... Supplement. Like if you lost your employment yeah. uh, because of COVID exactly, um, and because things were shut down, they would give you, what was it, $2,000 a month something or something like this. for every Canadian that had lost it. So it was a very good system at that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there was this couple and I don't remember the full article exactly, but it was the, there was this couple that was like complaining basically. Mm. They were like, oh, we're having to pay back because if because basically th- when the government rolled this out, they didn't like, because it needed to happen so fast, they didn't have like a huge like quality control process right. to make sure who should be getting it should be getting it. Yeah. And they're only going to know when it gets to that tax season time. And they and check your stuff. Exactly. And they start seeing your pay slips and whatever else. So, so you could cheat it, yeah. but you're probably going to pay later. Exactly. Yeah. And this is what happened to this couple. They were like, Oh, we're, we're now slapped with this. Like, I don't know. It was like ridiculous. Right. Not ridiculous. they probably got it every single well, month. Well, they got it. And so they got it initially for like a month or two when they were both unemployed. Uh-huh. And then she was like, I don't know, a massage therapist or mm-hmm. something. And she went back to work and was working again, but she, she was still getting it. And you have to apply every single month. It's not like it's like a rollover process where they exactly. just keep giving it to you. So she intentionally applied. Yes. And then... And, and they give you so many warnings. Like I There's know. like all this text about how like, if you, you know, if you do this... Double dip or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. You're going to have to, you're going to pay it back later. Exactly. And the way that it worked out, like I think they were having to pay back like maybe 10 grand. Okay. And I, I like did the math like from the two, the sure. couple. And I was like... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The ten grand was exactly for those like oh, five shit. months that she claimed it, where right, she right, shouldn't right. have been. And I was right. like, I was like, why was she? She was she was complaining. Yeah, was this was, in the news? Yeah, it was like a Facebook news article. No. Yeah, and I was like, why is the this audacity? E-? I know. I was like, and the people in the comment section were ripped her to oh, What did she say? They were so good. They were like, well, this is what you get for double dipping. Like, <laughs> are you fucking stupid? Yeah. Like, and I think it was like a Calgary Herald or something. Mike, it was an actual news story. I think so. So she thought she was in the right. Yes. What did she say? She was like, I, this is gonna break us we're gonna have to pay this 10 grand back blah blah blah. and i'm like that's what you get when you fraud the system you frauded the (laughs) fucking system oh my god and i was like how is this newsworthy i know that's what i'm not understanding i'm like if it was like she did this and then if the news was like people frauded the system and now they have to pay it back maybe that makes sense yeah yeah yeah. but it's like why are you why no yeah like what the fuck this is why these programs get a bad rep because of people like this that like take advantage Mm. and do this kind of shit um <laughs> that's so funny i know honestly uh, the, the the comment section i was like you know oh my so, god it's so funny i don't always like the comment of section course. but sometimes i live for it <laughs> and in those situations yeah when the comment section is just so so right i know right it just it's great oh, oh. god and that was a good moment <laughs> okay so let me let me read you this article that i feel okay. like it's a little a little teeny bit privileged okay, okay. let's hear it let's hear it so Rose. title of article canadian traveler forced to stay in quarantine facility after negative covid19 test what? it oh says montreal leonard skied says he felt like he had been put in jail for a crime he didn't commit of course when he returned to to Canada from South Africa on Thursday. Skeed, who lives in Brandon, Mani- uh, Manitoba, mm-hmm. said he wasn't allowed to leave a Toronto quarantine hotel until the day after he received a negative result <gasps> from uh, on the COVID-19 test. Um, our negative results came out 
on Saturday, but we were not allowed to leave on until Sunday um, until a quarantine officer called us. Nobody called us. Nobody called us until Sunday. They got the results on Saturday. Here's the thing. I get it. Again, yeah. it's annoying. Okay. Yeah. It's also annoying when I have to call customer service and wait two hours. Oh God. Yeah. Okay. It's annoying. But like there are, you, unfortunately, you know, government things, not always the most efficient. Yeah. But that's, that's what always shocks me in the early <laughs> days when everyone was like, all the governments got together and, and organized this. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no, I okay, I have been on the phone yeah. for three hours to get a hold of the Canadian yeah. government. Believe me, they are not planning a fucking, mm-hmm. you know, injecting everyone with fucking chips and stuff. They are not <laughs> doing exactly. that. I'm they like, can't even they get, can't get their get tax their sh- shit right. Exactly. Like They're a giant mess. Yeah. That's why it's crazy. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, that that was one thing. Mm-hmm. Um. And again, I'm not, I'm not trying to say like, oh my God, he should be grateful. I'm just saying like, mm, you know, mm. little minor inconvenience. Yeah. You know, if you were detained for like three more days, maybe, maybe. Um, and then let's see here, blah, 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 blah. And somebody said t- this woman that was, she was returned to Calgary from Cairo, um, said that after landing in Canada, um, she felt like she was being punished for traveling to Africa. From the time you give them your passport, they call somebody immediately who then stays with you, takes you through a separate secondary screening area where they question you extensively, read you your rights, tell you that you have a right to a lawyer and that you're being transported by the federal government to an isolation facility. I get that that's a little bit like intense. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, while the quarantine facility is in a hotel, she said it doesn't have any of the hotel services like a restaurant cleaning or room service are you joking it's a quarantine facility yeah. buddy do you know what quarantining is <laughs> you don't go to restaurants when you're quarantined does she have to pay for it um i assume so yeah, i'm yeah. not sure okay yeah. let's see um so she said she was traveling with her two children five and eight which i'm sure kind of traumatic yeah, yeah um basically she said she doesn't understand why she had to stay in a quarantine hotel instead of returning to her nearby home to isolate there that's also a little weird mm. um because I, th- I feel like if you have a quarantine plan, you should be able to quarantine. But at the same time, do we trust people? But this is the thing. I think this a lot of people issue. like don't follow exactly. it. Right? So because like, how are you going to know which mm-hmm. one is going to, you know, well, some countries quarantine. were really strict on this. Like I know oh, when Asian I- countries are like, I can understand if Asian people complain because Asian countries are like, fucking intense yeah but even just i have some friends in australia and even australia it's like super intense so intense when they got there they had to go into a hotel like this is the early day earlier right right right. now for two weeks they are like however long yeah i think it was like two weeks right in like a hotel and you couldn't like see anyone or do anything and the government like controlled all of it do you know what i mean like there was no like you're going to your house to quarantine. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, no. You, you had get here, to stay there. You yeah. stay in that hotel. Exactly. So it's it's not new. Like mm-hmm. I, I mean, I I understand a little bit of both sides, but I'm I do understand like when we have this pandemic, we don't we're not really sure like what this new variant is like. It exactly. could be more dangerous. We don't know. Yeah. And you know, it's it's a preca- precaution. There's a lot of unknowns. Yeah. So let's see. Blah blah blah. I mean. It's so surreal, guys, that we're still. I know it's in so crazy. Craziness. It's so crazy, but anyways, I mean, she didn't have room service, so that's yeah, a problem. That is a problem. <laughs> I mean, I feel like a dick because I'm sure I would also complain. But would you? But would you complain to CNN or like no. you know <laughs> exactly? And I, like she was like on or the CTV. News. Yeah, I was like, this is embarrassing. I would not be complaining about this. Like, I don't know. Like, and then she says that. She thinks Canada's decision to place additional restrictions only on African nations at a time when the Omicron variant um, is present in Europe and United States is opportunistic and xenophobic. I didn't know it was present in in Europe. Yeah, they have it apparently in in, um, the UK. They're talking about like... Oh God, I heard it's bad in the UK again. Yep. Jesus Christ, when is this going to end? I don't know, Rose. I'm so... Like, I... I I, I don't know. God damn, Rose. God damn. It going to end soon? I don't know. Anyways, um, if you guys, if, if any of you stayed in these quarantine hotels, mm-hmm. I'm sure they're awful. I'm, I do apologize. I don't yeah. mean to be like a dick. But at um, the same time, guys, that like like to your point, we are a little privileged. They're, they're a quarantine yes. hotel for a reason. They're not like a yes. bougie hotel that you're you're paying <laughs> yeah. like to go into Mexico or yeah. to like wherever you're going. Like uh-huh. it's a quarantine hotel. Like and it's people, not. There was articles when people were like, oh yeah, they didn't have laundry service. Mm-hmm. I was like, you're there for two days. Do you really need laundry service? Like I get it. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> wash your underwear in the fucking sink. Yeah. Like it's not that bad. Or just leave your dirty underwear there, Rose. Yeah. Well, someone might steal it anyway. <laughs> oh, someone God. might try to, someone's going to break into your quarantine room and steal <laughs> your dirty underwear, Rose. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, uh, why? Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I think that, like, again, like, 
I, if I was in that situation, you're right. I would probably talk to you about it and be like, this fucking sucks. <laughs> like, what the hell? Would I uh, <laughs> then call CBC and say, it's, like, it's I want to be featured? traumatic event. Yeah. Uh, guys, they didn't have arugula in my salad. <laughs> Okay, they didn't have like, you know, a special pump for the hand soap. It was bar soap. (laughs) My skin chafes with bar soap. I couldn't request proper soap there. (laughs) The bathrobes were a little, little scratchy. They were too scratchy for me. I had to be there for a full two days. (laughs) They didn't have Wi-Fi. Actually, Wi-Fi. No, no. (laughs) Oh, Wi-Fi, I would complain. I'd be like, excuse me, CTV. Yes. This hotel does not have Wi-Fi. I'm in a quarantine (laughs) hotel against my will. (laughs) There's no yeah. Wi-Fi here. I can't check my Instagram. Uh, oh God! Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like, I think her point was like, okay, are these measures necessary? Maybe yeah. you could say those things, but yeah. like, it's just some of it just sounds a bit. I think it, I think it's just the way it's worded. Like, I, 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 I would maybe like if it was like something again a little bit more extreme, I might say like that. Be like, oh, yeah. you know, I don't know if this is warranted. Like, you know, yeah, maybe yeah, there's yeah. other ways that we can be yeah. doing this, but. Oh, God. I, like, I felt like a prisoner. Yeah, you're like, okay, <laughs> calm down. I was there for a whole 48 hours. Calm down, Karen. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, God. God damn. But um, yeah, anyway. Any so other news stories, Daniel? That be or is that the end that, of our podcast? That'd be the end for today, guys. God damn. Coming back at you from after a week of holidays. Woo! So, now we're heading into the real holidays. Is it yeah. just me or should we not be working in December? No, this was, I, I, I am very much an advocate of this. I think, honestly. It's ridiculous. Yeah, at least for that last week. You know, the week not from e- like. I, I would say it, the second half of December should just be holidays for mm-hmm. everybody. Yeah. Because there's so much pressure. We have to, you know, buy fucking Christmas presents, which by the way, is like just the whole thing is just too much, yeah. you know? It's one of those social things that we all do, but like, it's like, it's also ridiculous. It's mm. like every year you have to buy everybody a fucking present. Yeah. And you're just like, okay, like, you know, we live in a day and age where so many of us, we just buy whatever the fuck we need, you know? Well, this is the thing. If I need something. Unlike it's you. Yeah. Un- unless it's you. <laughs> Daniel has this thing where he constantly needs things. And I keep joking to him that I'm going to create a, a, a wish list for mm-hmm. him, for his needs. And then I can just order it. Yeah. Have it all come to my house. <laughs> get it delivered. But anyways, it's a very stressful time. Mm-hmm. You have to you have to buy presents. You have to go to so many little like gatherings. Yeah. And you know, you're drinking in those gatherings. You're probably hung over the next day. It's just not a good time to work. I and know. I'm already in the holiday mood. Like I don't want to work. I know. And it's just nice also. I just feel like there's something to be said about having like even just like a week or two of just like off time. Yes. You know? Are you gonna have some off time? I don't have any off time. Oh, I'll be working damn. the whole time, Rose. You'd be working. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I do have actually, I've, I've, I've realized I still have two more holiday days that I can sprinkle in somewhere. Ooh. So, and, and we get like, I think most companies, they get like, you get two days off for like Christmas. Oh yeah. You get Christmas and Boxing Day off yeah, no so matter I, what. So I ha- and because those fall on a weekend, that you get like obviously a Do Monday. they fall on a weekend? Yeah. Christmas, oh. Christmas day is on a Saturday, I believe. Really? Mm-hmm. Let me double check. I think so, because the Christmas Eve be on a Friday. Oh, I did not know these. Yeah, so most companies they'll give you like you know. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So that means I get the 27th and 28th off. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's not so bad. And then I have two. And then you can take 29th and 30th off as your vacation days. I could, yeah. So then you get the week off. Pretty much. Also. Why don't work. you just do that? I might do that. Anyway. So why are you complaining? <laughs> What's it like to have vacation days? Huh. God. Damn. Okay. <laughs> anyway, guys, that concludes this episode of our podcast. Woo-hoo! If you're watching on, I was going to say, if you're watching on Instagram, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up. Show us some love in the comment section below, guys. Our last video got a lot of hate. So yeah. Like and don't give love. us a dislike because we can't see it anyway. So oh, yeah. fuck you. Well, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just like it, okay? Yeah. Give me a thumbs up. If you're not already, follow us on Instagram at the Savage Podcast and also if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platforms, don't forget to hit that follow and then you get updated every time we release a new episode. And what else, Rose? Uh, and uh, join our Patreon, patreon.com slash the savage podcast. So you can hear your beautiful name butchered next yeah, week. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Thanks, and, guys. Oh, my God. It's probably going to be Christmas. Like soon this week for those of you that are listening that are not on Patreon. Yeah. So Merry Christmas. Yeah. If it is uh, Christmas, Christmas is coming up. Yeah. Anyways, we will talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye.